Hi and welcome to this walkthrough for BTEC Unit 4, uh, Assignment 2. So learn name C, a little bit out of order just with what the specification is, uh, but not too difficult to spot that. So this is the organic solid one video for this will be very similar to my previous with going through the organic liquid. So the organic solid, the acetyl salicylic acid, aka aspirin. Layout for this assignment, pretty much identical. So we've got two pass criteria. We've got P5 and P6 here. P5, essentially do the practical. Again, get a solid from it, get the melting point determined, be roughly decent. It's not gonna be perfect. And likewise, don't be stupid in the lab, don't kill anyone, don't smash too many things with that. On top of it though, same as before, draw simple conclusions. So you would say true melting point is, Google it, put in a reference. So we should have a reference for that. And then mine was, and then short little sentence after, so therefore, is it pure or not? So if you are close to the melting point, you can say it's reasonably pure. If you're miles off, you've just made a pile of rubbish, basically. Now, P6, again, getting on Google. Same four things to look up. Scale, equipment, testing, and raw materials required. With the scale, obviously we chuck a lot of aspirin down our throat. Everyone's in pain these days. So there's a lot of it made, be quite a big number. The raw materials, now how they actually make it. Now, one thing I want to point out that annoys me year on year with this, when you are trying to look up the raw materials to make it, I can't remember what the website's called, Made How, Make How, something like that. But it talks about making an aspirin tablet in terms of cornstarch and other things for compressing it into it. That is not what the criteria is after. That's essentially just how you make any generic tablet with taking an active ingredient and chucking some sugar around it just so then you can throw it down a child's throat without them rejecting it. So you need to look up how to make the acetyl salicylic acid, the actual active ingredient. So what chemicals do you need to make the active ingredient within aspirin? Equipment, same as before with the organic liquid. If you go on images, generally, if you type in the acetyl salicylic acid industrial production, you'll usually see some chemical engineering style flowcharts, and then you can go to that company's website and have a look at what machinery they are using. Testing, we did melting point testing, cheap and cheerful again, nice and quick, easy for students to do, 100% not what they will be using in industry. So try and find a, a piece of machinery in terms of the spectroscopic types that they usually use for testing the purity. As before, all references should be acknowledged. So we should have four references for the four things that we are looking up there. So a reference for each. Now in terms of your referencing should be Harvard Standard. Good website to use for this is Neil's Toolbox. And you can usually put in the website and the author and when you accessed it into that. And it will auto generate the appropriate layout for you. And that's a bit of a time saver because referencing will be the absolute bane of your life if you go on to university. Next bit, split in exactly the same way. So we've got a, where are we up to? I'm so M4 and M5 in here. So M4, carry out the practical well. So 
teacher shouldn't have to be correcting you for any safety issues or likewise setting up too much of the equipment for you. And then detailed conclusions about the purity of it. So you state how a melting point measurement works and then since you've got impurities, very likely your impurities will have lowered your melting point. So if the true one's uh, 138-ish, if I remember right, for aspirin, you've probably came out 120-ish. You talk about how the impurities affect the melting point. Then M5, comparison between the industrial techniques and what you've done in the lab. So same as I said in the last video, what I would do is kind of have lab, industry, have something like equipment being used, have a brief sort of statement of them. So in the lab, you're using things like the Buckner flask check what they use in industry and then you need to explain the principles behind what's going on. So what the Buckner flask is actually doing versus what the machinery used in industry is actually doing. So same as before. Principles for these. And then the final bit, D3, my memory serves me right, the top here, we've got similar, where are we at, yield, purity, key things in there. So, things to think about, I'll go through a few in another video, but we're looking for kind of a couple each. Your filtering this solid through filter paper you're trying to get rid of the impurities that have dissolved in the solvent when you've done your recrystallization if your filter paper's pores are too big for example then some of the solid could potentially drop through if the solid's dropping through you're losing it therefore your yield will be going down so we need a couple of pointers during the practical, what's occurring could affect yield and purity. Again, link in with the industrial. So why do we want a high yield? As before, more yield, more product, more things to sell, more money, rich people are happy. And then with purity, this is a pharmaceutical drug. If you're taking aspirin, you don't want to suddenly start convulsing and being sick because there's other chemicals in there. So with aspirin, pharmaceutical companies will have very good instrumental techniques for making sure it's extremely pure so that when you chuck that tablet down your throat, you know with pretty much certainty, everyone's genetics a little bit different. Some people have adverse effects, but you're fairly confident on what the outcome is going to be in terms of pain relief rather than, as I said, being violently sick. Now, learners will comment on the reliability of the techniques used. So, melting point measurements, TLC, are they effective for determining the purity? So, melting point, no, not really. It tells you it's impure, but it doesn't really give you any clue about what the impurity is. TLC, a little bit better if you kind of know what you're looking for. So have a check in industry if they use any instrumental technique that is better at analysing that actual tablet and stating what is present within it. So you'd compare these two to your industrial and same as with the organic liquid, there'll be something better than these two in industry. And I think that is it, effective ways, yep. Okay, right, so that's everything for assignment two then, pretty much a repeat of the first one. Thank you.